by far one of the most important ingredients when chasing trophy sized sunfish is seasonal patterns. When you learn to concentrate on the seasonal patterns, why the fish relate to them and how they relate to them, you will catch more and bigger fish, okay? Let's start off with winter time. For many, winter time is their time to sunfish. Why? A lot of them don't have a boat. That's the biggest ingredient. Winter time makes it a lot easier for people to get out on the ice to fish. No wind, no waves. What we want to concentrate is where are these sunfish going to be in the winter time? Early in the season, spring, summer, and fall, sunfish relate to the shallow water structure and the weeds. But as winter comes around, the oxygen depletes into the shallow water and the weeds, thus causing a lot of the forage that the sunfish love so much to head to deeper water. What is this forage? Microorganisms, zooplankton, and invertebrates. They will go to where the deep water structure is, and that's where the sunfish are going to be. So now let's talk about sunfishing. Let's talk about equipment next. For equipment, you can keep it as basic as you want. All you need is a chisel, an ice dipper, a rod and reel, and you're ready to fish or take it to the next level. Let's go with uh, the rod and reel. Let's go with an ice auger, a sonar, and a portable fish house. Portability lets you move around real quick and easy. Or take it to the Cadillac level if you want. A fish house on wheels. That is the deluxe. Nice way to go, not as versatile or mobile. That's the equipment you need to get going with ice fishing. Now let's talk about rods. It's a smorgasbord out there of rods and reels to use. A lot of people in wintertime like to watch a bobber. I do it once in a while too. On the other hand, we get more success when we learn to watch the line or a very, very soft tip. This is a tooth tamer rod, very soft tip using three pound test line on here. Another way I like to ice fish in the wintertime, a spring bobber. Any little bite on there or even a minnow on there will make that spring move. That's a fantastic way to go. Bobbers work great. I like to use a bobber, especially early in the season. The sunfish aren't as uh, finicky, but as the season progresses, they get finicky. And if you want to catch the big ones, you got to learn to be versatile. Now, fishing line. There is a complete selection of fishing line to go through. Incredible different filaments, different fibers, different braids, different materials. My favorite to use in wintertime is monofilament. You can go from two pound, three pound, or four pound test line. Two pound, a little light for me. You gotta play the fish too long and everything. A lot of times that line will snap. Hate the idea of a fish with a lure in its mouth. Four pound test works fantastic, works great. Little heavy. I found the perfect medium is three pound test line. Keep that in mind. Reels, any kind of reel with two to three ball bearings or more will work fantastic for you. That is one of the most important factors is a good, good reel. A lot of people skimp there, don't skimp there. Any kind of reel that'll hold 50 to 100 yards of line is all you need. Lures. There is a selection of lures out there that's second to none. Our favorite with our group, custom jigs and spins. They work great. When uh, lures don't work, a uh, plain hook works. But there's so much out there. You know, for, for the few cents on the dollar or for a dollar or two for a lure, it pays to have a big selection. We have a huge selection. You've got to be versatile when fishing. And when you move to the next level, Get yourself a sonar. There are so many sonars out there, it's incredible. You got Markham, you got Vexlar, you got Hummingbird. They're all fantastic, depends how much you want to spend. Sonars help you catch more fish all the time. Learn how to read it, it's going to be incredible what you can do. You can see a fish one or two inches off the bottom. You can see the weeds, individual weeds on the weed bed itself and everything. You'll see fish laying in there. Sonars are that accurate. Do you need one? It sure helps. Bait. Huge selection of bait out there. Live bait, artificial. It's a toss-up. I myself personally love live bait. I have a lot of artificial too as a backup. I usually start off with a live bait. Wintertime, wax worms, freshwater shrimp, mousies. I know it's a goofy name, but that's what they're called, mousies, and euro larvae, euro spikes. Those do play a huge important part when chasing sunfish, and crappie minnows work out too. Artificial, you need it can never have enough of it. I prefer live bait to start with. Some people prefer artificial bait to start with ice fishing. Biggest thing is have a big selection of both. If we got two or more people in the fish house or on the open ice fishing, we'll have everybody using something different. If the artificial is producing the best, we all switch to artificial. If wax worms are producing the best, we all switch to wax worms. That's the key. Be versatile, move around quickly, pick up a couple here and a couple there, and in no time, you'll have a pail full of sunnies. Okay. You fine? Nice one, huh? Ooh, look at that sunfish. That is a nice sunfish. I'll put him in the pail. 
Take a look at the size of that sunfish. Tom's using two waxworms on a jig. What are we, Tom? 20 feet of water? 20 feet of water. 20 just, feet just of water. A, just a blue go getter, but you gotta go it up after dark. Otherwise, they won't touch it. That's a great idea. We'll put this one in the pail. It's gonna be darn good eating. Keep in mind, like Tom said, charge that lure up. Get the glow going. Couple waxworms hang in there. You There's know, another one. Another one. Look at that. This is a nicer one. Take your time. Want me to help you on the hole there? Oh, that's a nice one. He just came right up. A lot of the sunfish are suspended. And this one was suspended. You go up to him and just hammer it. Just hammer it. Incredible. Look at the size. This is bigger than my hand. This is much bigger than my hand. There, it's at the palm. Look how much is left. Feels nice. You know, they're, like Tom was just saying, they're suspended about four or five feet up. I moved mine up about four or five feet, and I watched one come up and just hammer it. I don't know if this is a bass or a big sunfish. I think it's a bass. No, it's a big sunfish. Nice sunfish. Look at that one. Huh? Look at that. He came right off the bottom. Shot up and just smacked it. It's probably about nine inches, huh? Real nice fish. He's a good fighter. Get him in the hole. There he is. Ooh, another nice one. Came right off the bottom again and hit it. Shot right up and just smacked it. You can see I got one, two, three of them down there now. You can see me going down here. They're pretty thick now. I always stop above them and make them chase it up, come up and, and get you. you don't, I don't like sitting right in them. See them come up? There he is. This is a smaller one. A little bit smaller, but still, you know, all right. Maybe seven inches. We got one right there. There we go. All right. They showed up, you know. Watch that sonar, like I said, and that's been the key for us. Oh, there's a nice one. He's caught in the transducer cord a little bit. That's all right. Boy, that is another really nice sunfish. I stopped above them, and then I jiggled, teased them. That's the key. That's what Tom's been doing. That's what I've been doing. That's what Travis has been doing. Tease them a little bit. Entice them to bite. Tell you what, these are nice sized sunfish, folks, anywhere in the Midwest. Oh. <laughs> Didn't even know he was on there. I was just setting it. Maybe it's your first crappie. All right, wrapping up in the transducer there. Let's see what we got. Yeah, I was just putting my line down there. I wasn't even ready. Oh, that's a nice sunny. Whoa. That's a real nice sunny. Oh, boy. That's a nice one. Yeah. Look at that guy. Look at that. Definitely bigger than my hand. <laughs> yeah, so I was just dropping the line down there. Um, I just got done getting this lure to glow here, getting it uh, ready to go, put it down there. I didn't even really pull back or anything. He just smacked it and... I just happened to jig there for a second and he was on. So nice fish here. Nice. Um, feels real nice. Oh my gosh. That is a big, a big, 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 sunny, holy mackerel. <laughs> Look at the size of that sunfish. It's bigger, bigger than my hand. That's a good 10 inches long. You know, I think the thing that really surprises me is it's two hours after dark and we're still catching sunfish. Normally, they quit when it's sunset. That just goes to show you, folks, right technique, right location, right procedure, you too can keep on catching panfish well into the dark. Hey, Kim, you home? Yes, I am. Good morning. How's it going? Thank you.
Dad, good to see you. Thank you, same here. A good friend of mine, Kim Lucas, you gotta listen to how he gets his panfish. This man has taken hundreds and hundreds of panfish, especially Sonny's over a pound, pound and a half. Kim, you wanna share a little bit of your secrets with us? Well, pretty much what I like to favor is very light tackle. And I start out with a, uh, a spring, which a lot of people can buy. Um, you make your own spring bobber. I do make my own spring out of a guitar string. Guitar string, okay. Real I, sensitive. I feel it's very sensitive. I can get different weight on my uh, wire, and that uh, can create me a different bounce um, or jiggles for my presentation. I'm, I'm using very light line. Two pound, one two, pound? Two pound test. Okay. I guess I feel comfortable with two pound. Uh, that way I can handle some bigger fish if that happens. Yeah. So mainly my deal is I, my line curls up. I got no weight on my line. I got no sinkers. I just got a little weight on my hook. Okay. What I do is I start on the bottom. As you can see, my line curls up. That means I'm on the bottom. Okay. With that, I start jiggling up at the bottom and I very seldom stop it. What I'm trying to do is develop a nice jiggle mm -hmm. and anything that moves that line, that wire, there's a fish there. Sometimes you may not always see that wire move. Uh, if it stops, if it goes up, if it moves a little bit, there's a fish there. That's how sensitive it is. Okay. So I start on the bottom and I keep working myself as far, as high as I can get. I, sometimes I'll stand up. When I'm in my house, I cannot stand up, so I'll go as high as the, the roof, and that's it. As you can see now, I hold my, my, my left hand, trying to keep it from shaking. Right. Um, I feel the best control is to have that thing however way you want to jiggle that. Uh, you don't, how I feel is, what I'm doing up here is what's happening down with down my there. hook. Yep. So if I'm jiggling like this, right. my hook is jumping like that. So what I try to do is get a nice consistent jiggle. Everybody has their way of how they want their bait. Right. Um, for me, I want my bait tight. I'm using worms. And uh, I don't I want my hook to be covered. Right, right. No exposed hook whatsoever. That is that's my opinion, and that's how I how I would teach anybody is to have that hook covered. Yep. Well, there you go, folks. You know, like I said, you don't need all the fancy equipment, but with the right knowledge of the basics and how to do it, you just heard from one of the best, you'll catch more panfish, too. Kim, we're going to let you get back to fishing. We're going to get back to fishing ourselves. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Kim. Enjoy. You too, buddy. Yeah, I'm sitting right there. right off the bottom. There we go, bingo, bingo. Just got the lure right down there. Brought him up a little bit, teased him a couple of times. Shook the rod tip just a hair. The sun's not even up. Not a big sunfish, but you know what? But it's a sunfish. We're going to throw them back in there, let them go, let them grow. They're sitting right off the bottom, and that's the use of a sonar, a good sonar. You can pick these fish up. I got one waxworm on, let him go. Got the hole covered. I mean, the whole complete hook covered. You can see a little bit exposed. We're going to cover that back up again. This fish house is placed strategically on a hole. And this hole is what was just concentrating these sunfish and these crappies like you wouldn't believe. And that's what's nice sometimes in the wintertime. If you can find one of these main structures, one of these main holes where the fish are concentrated, they're going to stay there all winter, you can put a house on it. We're lucky enough to get inside this house right now. There's more fish down there. Let's get back to fishing. There we go. Nicer one. Much nicer one. Much nicer. Well, this one, I had to coax it up two feet off the bottom before he would come and nail it. And he barely touched it. I'm using a spring bobber, probably the most sensitive indicator of a strike that I've ever used before for fishing. But yeah, this one's a little bit bigger than the last ones. 
Nice bluegill. What impresses me is we've got a major cold front. This has been one of the coldest uh, winters in history. We're going on 50 days below zero here in central Minnesota. Now if you take a look right here on the side, can you see this? There's two bloodworms. They come right off the bottom. Take a good look at them. So they lay in the mud, the sand. And that's what these sunfish are after is these bloodworms. It's a delicacy for them. You know, same with this one. They're sitting right in the mud after those bloodworms. And about the third time I got him two feet, three feet off the bottom, he hit. There we go. There we go. That's a nicer sunfish. That's a nicer one. You can see the sun is just coming up. Beautiful sunfish. All right, what I'm using is a custom jigs and spins the demon. I love using a kind of jig that has some kind of wobble to it when you jig it up and down. This one goes back and forth, rocks back and forth. It's got enough weight it gets done right away. You don't need a sinker on it. It's got everything going for it. You know what? Let's get some more fish going too. Oh, it's got a big one. There we oh, go. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay, he's still there. Oh, I think. Yep, yeah, I think that's something bigger than a bluegill. I've seen. Oh, no, it's a jumbo. That's a huge bluegill. Oh, Mike, don't lose him here. Let's go put the sonar. All right, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Look at that size of that guy. Look at the size of that. That's huge. Bigger than the hand. All right. Caught that one on a moon eye there. A little different presentation. So, I've been fishing off the bottom. Steve's been having a bunch of luck off the bottom. I've been trying, uh, throwing a few different jigs on there, not having much luck. And then I noticed uh, about a minute ago, I saw a really big mark on my sonar about six feet above uh, the bottom. It went in there and then it disappeared. And I had stayed at the bottom. So then I uh, saw it come by again. And so I was like, all right, third time that happens, I'm going to go up there and see. And then, uh, sure enough, it marked a third time with all within two minutes. So I went up there and this guy just came in and bam. And with he was way more aggressive than I was expecting. That's why at first I thought maybe I had something a little bit bigger just because uh, just it wasn't the pattern that we had been seeing. So we're going to keep this one in the bucket. It's a nice size if you look there. Just to give you an estimate of how big it is, I know my hands are about 8 inches. So this thing is at least 10, if not bigger. So there we go. Nice bluegill. We'll keep that one. Caught off the moon eye. There we go. See nice white action there. Oh, there we go. Oh, we got him. He came flying in. That's another nice size one. Giving a good fight. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. That's a, oh beauty. That is a beauty. Look at that guy. Beautiful fish. And this guy, he was uh f close towards the bottom there again, and he just came in like a missile. I just saw a little bit of a line. Next thing you know, it turned white on the sonar there. So that means it turns white. Get ready for a hit. Boom! He nailed it. This is a keeper. We'll throw him in the bucket. Just got set up out here on the lake. Yeah. Working around some holes here, found some fish suspended. It's a lure of sunfish. Had a bigger one just a little minute ago. These fish haven't been pressured too much. Right now, they're a little bit deprived on oxygen. It's late in March. Ice is about three feet thick yet. Uh, a lot of lethargic fish right now. But if you get into an area where in an area that hasn't been pressured much by a lot of fishermen, and uh, these fish are a lot more active than if you're in a pressured spot where those fish will just sit there and uh, look at your jig and not do any movement. Here, I can actually I'll start. You can watch me pull it up bump 
just making those fish come after the bait. You gotta work them here. There's a lot of smaller fish mixed in with some nicer sized fish. So you wanna work a hole for a little bit and then move on and see if you can get into some bigger fish. Not the biggest in size, but we're getting some action today at least. They're kind of hanging right on the edges of the drop-offs today in about the 10 to 15 foot area. And we'll find them moving hole to hole, see them on the locators, and work them. We'll just keep on working them. He on a light bite right there, just kind of holding the bait. There, finally got him. Took about three tries. A little bit nicer fish there. But stay on them. If you miss them the first time, drop right back down and sometimes they'll come right back up again. And keep on going after that bait, you can keep on raising them up. I'll put on some new bait. Just take them by the head, put them through. And since we're releasing, I've taken and I've uh, taken my pliers and taken my barb down. It's much easier getting the bait on, and much easier taking the fish off. There we go. Nice little bluegill there. Uh, like Eric showed us, they're suspended kind of a couple feet off the bottom there, so I've been fighting with this one for a little while. Finally able to get one of them pulled up here, so. Pop that off. There we go. Run back in. Let's see this guy here. Oh yeah. That's a nice sunny. That's what we're looking for. There we go. I was fishing about seven feet. Nice sunny. But he was suspended and what I've been doing is I've noticed that they've been hitting when I'm more steady and I'm just leaving the jig uh, kind of float there. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of just set it right around that seven foot range. I jig it about three times and then I just let it float back down. And that seems to be really responsive to them and they usually they're hitting it when it floats back down. So that's what I'm doing jig three maybe four times let it sit wait for a hit jig three four times let it sit wait for the hit nice sunny right here we got a whole school of sunfish if you can pick them out they're just on the outside of us we might have to move to get a little bit closer to them but they are thick if you they can make thick. them out they are all over out here here, as you can see, the sunfish finally noticed the camera, and now they're moving right into us. Look at them all, my gosh. There we go. That's a nice one. Get the camera rolling, Steve. This is a nice one. All right. There we go. Nice sunny there. We uh, just made a little bit of a hole hop. Uh, where we were at before, it was a little too windy, a little too cold, so we decided to move over a little bit, put up the tent, see what we can do. And there we go. Second sunny that we got out of the hole here. We got one on right now too, Steve. Right. There we go. And a little smaller one. Get him back down the hole. Yeah, early this morning when we came out, I had been fishing these fish for the past couple days. And the guys were fishing right off the bottom in this 13, 12, 13, 11 feet of water in that area. 
and they weren't seeing any fish and I was getting fish and I had to tell them that these fish are coming in suspended right now with this oxygen. Everything is way suspended up like we're catching these fish only seven feet down and 12, 13 feet of water. You can even pull them up to four feet if you, if you want to. They'll keep on coming up after it until the hit. And they just got a light bite. They're just barely tapping that spring. He's got pictures of my spring. You can see him just hit it, hit it. And you can't quite even, you can't react fast enough to get a hook set on these fish when they're hitting like that. Coming up right now, so he hits. Give it a little tap and we got him on. Yep, got one on. A little bit better size than what we've been getting. We had the camera down a little while ago here taking some videos of the fish and it just slowed them down. They just do not like looking at that camera down there. So now we're just trying to pick up a few more. The wind's really picked up and it's really slowed down the fish. And with this wind, we're talking 20 plus mile per hour winds right now. So it's been a tough bite. This morning wasn't too bad, still a little bit tough, but right now with this wind, the pressure it has really slowed down the fish. Alright, just got a nice hit here. Oh, got wrapped up in my transducer, but that's a nice sunny. There we go, nice looking sunny there. It's just getting ready to uh, give up on this hole. Uh, hadn't seen any action after working a guy for a while. Uh, couldn't get him to bite, and then this guy came flying in like a bullet. Um, came up at about three, four feet off the bottom, so about 10 feet, we're about 13 feet right now. Um, just jigged it a little bit, he hit it pretty hard, and was able to pull him in here. So nice size sunny there, good eight to 10 inches. So, all right, we'll let him back. Watch him on the sonar. Been playing tag with him up and down, up and down. Finally, here he comes. Not bad. You know, we're catching much bigger. Travis just released a nice, nice size one. But that's the key with ice fishing. Watch that sonar. Have the proper presentation with the proper bait. Got to go. A little silver jig here with a couple wax worms on. Let this one go. You can take a look at my sonar. They're still down there. Right here you can see them about a foot off the bottom or so. There he is. There we got him. There we got him. That one feels good. Uh, you watch me play him up and down a few times. Yeah, this is a nice fish. There we go. This is what we're after. That is what we're after. That is a big, big sunfish anywhere. It's bigger than my hand. That's a good 10 inch sunfish, bigger than my hand. Go ahead and hook them. Gonna get back down there. There we are. There we go. Now that's been the key today is hole hopping all around. See what we got here, yeah. Not a bad size one. You know, a beautiful day like today, it's the last thing you want to do is set up a fish house. You know, I'm out here with uh, some good friends, relatives. We're all hole hopping, having good luck. Just jigging, we got a couple on the sonar here. Watching it, just watching the tip. There we go. There we go. Nice sunny. Not bad, not bad. Another nice size one, hand size. I think the other two are a little bit bigger, but uh, you know what? This one's going in the pail too. Nice one. Nice one. Ah, he's caught my transducer. Here he comes. I mean, he's not a whopper, but please. Nice, sunny, Tom. Nice. That one actually raced up and hammered it, believe it or not. I'm marking them, but half of them, three fourths of them don't bite. You got two of them on the bottom. Just do a little, little jigging. <laughs> there we go. This one feels nicer. This one feels nicer. 
Oh, yes, 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 yes. There we are. All right. You know, we've been preaching to the choir comes home, move around, be versatile. We're picking up a couple here and there. Not everyone's been biting. It's a beautiful day. They come up, sniff it, go back down. But look at the size of that sunny.